evening. I wrap Steen with your financial market wrap up and this wrap up is for Thursday and we're now at the 7th of April 2022 about 6:25 p.m. central time. So an interesting day. What the market got today was the uh, unemployment, the jobless claims as I wasn't really that that's the right title, jobless claims. And they came in at low seen in 1968, 50 year lows. Now, the importance of that is this. It tells the Fed, number one, we've got 3.6% unemployment. The claims are falling. I didn't like that the continuing claims went up a bit, but that could just be a seasonal. I like that these numbers dropped as much as they did. It means people are coming off the claims roll, too, to a degree, and getting jobs. So they're switching around here. Spring's coming, summer's coming, but what does that do? So the Fed can say, you know, we're going to go with the half point hike right now. We're going to roll the balance sheet. We'll watch to see how that affects the jobs market, because if the jobs market stays strong, it cushions the fight against the inflation. Yes, we can take the economy and it will slow down with higher interest rates. Higher interest rates do not make the economy get stronger. They are meant to pull the economy back. The dancing act, and it's a rough one, is do you put it into a recession or now or not? And nobody quite knows the answer to that. So that's what we're all going to be looking at. But seeing the jobs this way, the uh, as strong as they are, seeing the unemployment claims at a 50 year low, this is very positive, And the market can withstand that first, if you will, bump up. In the S&P, before I get too far, tomorrow's the last day you can see the S&P report. Now, typically, I put up my reports for three business days when I make a video. I did this one five because I think it's so darn important. We, by accident, forgot to uh, move it to five. So it finishes tomorrow, and then all my other special reports are three days in nature. To see the special report, just take your cursor, move it up here, click the icon, and away you go. It's that simple. This is the battleground, the 18-week moving average of closes, the 45.0535 level. When we take a look at the S&P bar chart, you have a market that's trying to consolidate prices for a bit. I do not for a second think this market's going to go up and make new all-time highs. But I do think you can get a gain out of the month of April. We've early on had a setback in the market. Uh, you can see how the market is broken back where you're at. The market is down to key moving averages. I was hoping that would happen when I was putting together the report five days ago. So five days ago, just so you can see, let's count this. Uh, today is Friday. Let's go to Thursday. I won't make you nuts with that. Thursday, Wednesday, that's day two. Tuesday, Monday, and this was last Friday, if you will. Five days ago, this is where the market was. I began putting out and recorded my report. I started doing it and I put it out Monday morning. And now the report's looking at this and looking at the pullback and I'm counting that the market's going to pull back there and try to find its support in these moving averages and from there get a bounce. Now, traditionally, that's what happens. The buy date, according to more research, is you buy on the 7th, I think you get out on the 29th of April, in the past, and past history is not a guide of future, but you can look at it and get ideas that you get seasonal strength. In the past, it's worked 15 out of 15 years. That does not mean this won't work this year, and it doesn't mean this won't be the losing year. Nobody knows, but that gives you that. We also have another set of facts. Out of the past 25 years, the month of April in the S&P specifically has gained in 20 of the 25 years for the month of April. Okay, so I look at those factors, I look at where we're at, I look at the chart pulling back and I go, that's a reasonable look-see type of trade. Why do I think we're not going very far if the market does go up? Because the Bollinger Bands are suddenly wrapping their arms around price. So from here, wherever that Bollinger Band ends up, that would be the target that I'm looking at for this market. You've pulled back away from being embedded. The goal when you're embedded if you lose it, is to get back to the 18-day average of closes. That's what I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course on our website at irapstein.com 
under the word education. Go look at it, learn something. So that's the goal. Price generally follows momentum. Momentum leads price. I'd be wrong in this outside day down that maybe the market's then gonna take that high out and actually you'd be looking at the new high in the market. Didn't tap the very next day after losing the reading, goes right to that average, and it has fought the battle since then now for three days. Is there anything on this chart that can suddenly just say, hey, I'm bullish? No. Could the chart resume and fall back to the lower Bollinger Band? It could. I'm just presenting what the what ifs in this market. In the NASDAQ, the one thing I did here over and over is I told you, hey, this is where the pros are coming out of this market. They're not buying up there. They're not saying, hey, we're suddenly going back to these highs. I don't believe that for one second. I know on TV, I'm watching the analysts and they keep talking about that. And I'm going, I don't see how. The whole goal of the Fed is to tame the economy down. The last really positive quarter of earnings should be the one that we're getting reported on now and even more so next week, the bigger boys come out. But you're, you're seeing the reports coming out already. You have certain people like the Warren Buffetts of the world stepping in and on these pullbacks like they did in Hewlett Packard today, stepping in and buying. He's a value investor. He didn't just buy his first shares in Hewlett Packard. I think he had a lot of shares before. He's got like 12% of the company. He deploys his money when everybody's fearful and, and it goes hand in hand with his ratios coming down where he's looking at price earning ratios and the like. I'm not warned he can speak for himself, uh, but that's pretty much what he does. He's a value investor and he holds for the long term. He's not an in and out trader. So in looking at it, let's assume it keeps going down, just like in the S&P, maybe you get to the lower Bollinger Band. And on the upside, I think you're gonna have a big problem when you re-rally, if you re-rally, back up to the 100 day, the 200 and the upper Bollinger Band. In the mini Dow, the battlegrounds developed right in front of your eyes, these two averages against it. So at first, we had the market going up and I recall I'm watching TV and everybody's talking these highs and I'm going, and I was here saying, I don't think that's going to happen. I started to doubt myself because you get so many people that I think are bright, smarter than me, and they're going, no, you know, the market's defying gravity. It's on its way. I don't know. My work's not saying that. And away you go here. That doesn't mean we're going to collapse. It just means that I think the market's doing what the other two indices did. And in the Russell, yay, it did its job. It hit the lower Bollinger Band today. And if you're a tech trader and you understand the enhanced Bollinger Band course, this is where the shorts are covering. So I see reason for that some people might deploy money in that market. I, I, I'm not a contra trend trader, but that wouldn't surprise me. Where did the VIX go to? Right to the area of problem. The combination of the 18, the 100, and the 200-day average, it's lost its embedded reading. It's got to work itself out of now being oversold. How do you do that? Well, you don't break any further, that's for sure. You might rally a little bit here. If you rally, that's bullish the stock market. T-bond market, still very much in the bear camp, and you got to be careful. Take a look. Right here, both numbers got, and this was today, both numbers got under 20. They were not this way yesterday on Wednesday. And today you're trying to put both numbers under 20. You could get embedded again, which would drive the market further down. It's also most oversold right now because you're not embedded and you have two days like that. 10 year note, how many days do we have now down? Not here, not Tuesday, but watch this. Wednesday, Thursday, we don't know where tomorrow's gonna close, but if you're embedded, watch out. You're going, in my opinion, until that red line kicks back over 21, it's saying market wants to go where? To higher interest rates right away. Dollar index has gone from the lower Bollinger Band to the upper. This is where the pros come out, in my opinion. Now, I've been asked, where do I think the market could go? We have something called price counts, and you're entitled to get that service for free from us if you're one of my paid subscribers. In fact, we're putting together a whole form for the paid subscribers to let them refresh and know exactly what they're entitled to. It calls under the current count for a possibility. The market's already met its first count. It did it right here. That's the easiest count on the move. It sets itself up in, right down here. 
Now, if it wants to keep going, 104 is a possibility in this market. We did a special uh, chart of the day today on it, and our traders got a chance to see that. In the euro, it's the flip-flop of the dollar. You went from the upper band to the lower. Why? Because 40% of the dollar index is made out of this. So the weighting there. If you're going to play the euro, it's like playing the dollar. You're just doing a mirror image. In the British pound, the trend is down, but very oversold. Are we close to embedding? Nah, tonight's the first time it's getting both numbers under uh, 20. It's oversold. It could reach down here, but I think you're stuck in the sideways action of the Bollinger Bands. Bitcoin, who was the first guy to tell you this market has a good chance when it's lo if it loses the embedded reading? This was Friday of last week. You lose the reading right here on Monday. If you don't get it back on Tuesday, the odds favor you're going to the 18-day average of closes. This is what I teach in that enhanced course. Bingo. You're there. So now... Markets hit its target. Now it has to wait and see what happens. If the momentum keeps building here, because the trend is down and the bias down, wherever that Bollinger Band is, that could be the next downside target. Look at the differential between June, Brent, and June um, WTI oil. This is the biggest break we've seen in a long time. And as you can see in the Brent, you're breaking down. Maybe you're going to head back into the 95 area. I have my doubts about it, but there's no reason you can't. You are oversold. The trend is down. I'm certainly in the bear camp on this chart. And I told all my subscribers and you here, I've been telling my subscribers for three mornings that I think the pros are selling the 18-day average with the stop over this high, but it's a $5 risk. It's too big and that they're targeting wherever that Bollinger Band is, there's actually a window envelope that's being hit right now, and that'll be the main support on the way down the first one. You're doing the same identical thing in WTI. As this market was kicking back up here, I said, okay, they're going to sell against that. And the proof of the puddings, I got all the recordings. It was telling traders that with stops over there. I also told traders, that's too big of a risk for my type of trader. I mean... It's monstrous, 4 or $5 risk in, a, in crude oil is big money, but here you go with the gain. It's what the chart said. Could you have done option strategies and cut that down? Absolutely. You do what you have to do. My job is to point these things out and be the edge for you in what I'm seeing. Sometimes I'm going to be wrong, that's for sure. Okay, we'll see what happens. We then get to the products, and they're running the upper Bollinger Band. In, in the nat gas. That's just power. Why? Because the U.S. is the new powerhouse of the world with natural gas. We're going to become even bigger in this. You wait till Europe throws something of an act. They have to do it. And they build more terminal ports so we can get this to them. We're going to have ships just like back and forth. We got to put a, a rail on them so they don't move and they're just going like that back and forth to get them away from Russian energy. We can do it, they can do it, build the ports, we'll do the rest here. Could it be easier than that? I don't think so. So, you put this all together, and I know some of you want to trade ETFs and futures. Well, I give you that program. It's really simple. I created a combo package of the two. So at 5.30 in the morning, what I do is I come out and I'm looking at what the futures are. I'm going to talk first the fundamentals in the morning. I do that with the first video that you see in every one of them. I'll talk the reports coming out during the day, what's going on in Asia, Europe, what I'm seeing, what reports are due to come out, the expectation for the report, because it's remember, it's 5.30 in the morning. They're all about to come out. And then the trade setups that I'm seeing. There's going to be 40 charts that I cover there, and I'm going to cover about the same number of charts in the ETF. The difference now in the ETF, it's going to be 9 o'clock in the morning. The reports are typically out, so now I can blend the two for you, and we put it all together. Now you get the same package, same way to do this. You want to learn about it? Simple. Go to www.iraepstein.com under the word what? Research. It's so simple. So again, if you want to see the report, the uh, S&P report, it's going to go away. I promise you tomorrow during the uh, probably late in the day, it'll disappear. 
just click up here. You can watch it. You won't see it again. We don't leave it on the website. Typically, it's three days. I felt this was just such an important event to leave it a little longer. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good one. See you tomorrow.